So with the Berserk Saga finally said and done, it's time to actually talk about different things on this channel. And I'm actually excited about this one since it quickly became one of my favorite shows coming out right now. What's going on, guys? No, 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 no! Hey! Don't pull that gun at me, man. Don't pull that gun at me. Take the shot! No, 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 no! What's going on over there? Do you have whiskey? No. We have herbal tea. I love herbal tea. What do you got there? Oh, I've got an audition tomorrow. I'm an actor. It's all mine. Forgiving, Jeff. I'm sorry, I fucked your wife. He's sorry he fucked my wife. <laughs> you know, and she's no saint either, okay? There's a whole history we don't need to get into. I I, I think I just overreacted. There's no forgiving Jeff! That's right. Barry, a show you probably haven't heard of, it's sort of a sleeper hit, at least to put it lightly, though it's definitely well worth your attention. For those unaware, Barry is the HBO crime drama comedy show created by and starring Bill Hader. The basic synopsis is that Barry is an ex-marine turned small-time hitman who takes a job to go to Los Angeles and assassinate a target. While he's there, he's pulled into the Mark's acting class and finds that he actually really enjoys being on stage. So Barry has this growing conflict between wanting to be an actor and being a violent criminal. It sounds completely ridiculous, yes, but the show is kind of aware of how weird this idea actually is. The series is currently ongoing with the third season having recently finished and season four on the way. Each episode is roughly around half an hour and there's only really eight episodes per season. So this is actually a pretty quick show to get through if you decide to sit down and watch it. And should you? Well, I definitely think so. Barry is one of those shows that manages to walk a very tight rope between being a pretty damn funny comedy and shifting over into a genuinely disturbing thriller. It takes the time to show a separation between the two worlds. The acting world of Los Angeles, where everyone's basically a sheltered idiot, and the dark underbelly full of organized crime and violence. Now, this is one of those shows where each episode leads into the next one, building a larger and larger story as it goes on. So things start off relatively quiet, mainly focusing on Barry's struggles between being a paid killer and wanting to be an actor and finding a new life for himself, since that's an almost impossible double life to keep balanced. One thing I will say is that all the characters are great. Barry himself is a very good protagonist. Bill Hader is capable of giving all kinds of layers to the guy, and it is pretty clear that this is his attempt to be remembered for more than just being a goofy comedy guy, since he does the majority of the heavy lifting in the acting department. He has a wide range of emotions between down-to-earth, goofy, kind of fun-loving guy, to absolutely pantshit terrifying, to completely awkward and almost robotic. There's a lot of different stages he gives to Barry, and it's pretty funny to think that Dave from Hot Rod could be a legitimately terrifying dude. Well, I got off work early, and uh, you know my buddy Derek? Well, he was like, I've got this acid, but I can't do it. And I was all like, well, I'll do it. So I did it. And uh, by the time I got on my banana board, man, I was, 
I was tripping balls pretty hard, man. So I decided to get on my bench grinder, and uh, a piece of metal flew up and hit me right in the eye. It's pretty awesome. And uh, that brings us to now. Yeah, well, just try and relax. <sighs> Can do, man. Can do. But there's definitely others that end up being really likable characters. Steven Root as Fuchs, basically Barry's handler, is probably my second favorite character in the whole show. It definitely helps that I love Steven Root as an actor. His performance as Milton from Office Space is... it's just brilliant. But most people probably recognize him as Bill Dotry from King of the Hill, since everyone watched that show. Now you might be thinking that you can guess what his archetype is going to be based on this. Oh, is he like a complete buffoon that drags Barry into trouble? And you're kind of right. However, instead of being a lovable idiot or eccentric oddball, Fuchs is actually a pretty evil motherfucker. The dude's extremely manipulative and greedy, and as the show goes on, you realize that he's kind of the main villain of the whole thing. I don't want to spoil it, but by the end, you're going to think he's the devil incarnate due to some of the shit he comes up with. Another standout is Noho Hank, played by Anthony Kerrigan. He he is eccentric. He's a flamboyantly gay member of the Chechen Mafia, someone who really doesn't fit in with this gang of killers and maniacs, but he actually ends up being a pretty hilarious and lovable addition. Some of the funniest scenes of the show involve Hank, and he always ends up just stumbling into crazier and crazier shit. But probably the most significant role of the series beyond Barry himself is the acting teacher Gene Cousineau, played by Henry Winkler. Yeah, the Fonz himself, but instead of being a smooth-talking cool guy, Gene is kind of a prissy asshole. He's a burned-out, failed actor trying to feel like a hotshot teaching a new group of students he basically scammed into taking his class. While he might seem like a complete douche, he actually winds up being really sympathetic. You see more of his circumstances and what caused his career to collapse, and the weight he holds knowing he is the reason why he never got that level of stardom he was always searching for. On top of the increasingly fucked up shit that Barry gets him into, the relationship between Gene and Barry is a guiding force behind a lot of what happens. Seeing the two bond and sort and become a father-son type of deal. But you get the point, this show has some pretty awesome characters to it. The whole cast all have moments of being complete goofballs, and their fair share of harrowing experiences. These are all complicated yet enjoyable people. Well, except one. Yeah, let's not forget to talk about Barry's love interest real quick, because, uh, oh boy. Sally. So, to put it simply, Sally is a bad person. In fact, she's a really bad person. That's not to say the actress does a bad job, in fact, Sarah Goldberg is pretty fantastic at portraying her. It's just that Sally in the story is a bad person. She's kind of the quintessential actress story, leaving small town America for a chance at a career in Hollywood. The problem is that she's very egotistical and extremely selfish, feeling almost entitled to the spotlight and not being afraid to screw people over to get what she wants. Now, Sally is a lot more complicated than just this. There's there's also the whole history of her first marriage and the shit she had to deal with just to make it to Jean's class to begin with, but at no point is Sally ever really a good person. Everything she does is for herself, and it's very obvious she's written to sort of be a Lady Macbeth type character, an allegory that comes up more than once just to point it out there. Basically, she's someone that doesn't really comprehend the consequences to her own actions before it smacks her in the back of the head. The only problem with this is that Sally is Barry's main love interest, so you'll be made intimately aware of the depths she's willing to sink to. Hell, season 3 just sort of goes full mask off and completely embraces that Sally's a horrible human being. I was actually okay with a lot of her scenes, even her relationship with Barry, though there were a lot of points where I was going, bro, she's not worth it. But some of you guys will hate every time she's on screen, so fair warning ahead of time. Beyond the main cast, there's a lot of small-time characters who show up as well, each one serving to flesh out the world and help establish the very surreal and out-there style of humor the show likes to play with, since the comedy in Barry is pretty great. You have this yin-yang between goofy, almost slapstick-style jokes and imagination sequences, where it goes completely nuts for the sake of it, to very gritty, almost black comedy. Yes. Have you seen Doubt? It's this movie where Meryl Streep is a nun and she makes Philip Seymour Hoffman, who's a priest, admit he's been molesting little boys. It's amazing. Oh, it sounds amazing. You'd be the priest. No, it totally makes sense. I I'd love to play a priest that's molesting little boys. Um, do, do we, like, practice or something? Or? Yes. I Meet me at 6.30 at Jake's, a half hour before the show. I'll bring your pages and your wardrobe and we can run it a few no. times. You don't have to be off book. Great. Great. Okay, thanks, Barry. Awesome. Okay, bye. Siri, what is off book? Freeze, cowboy. Showing two results for off-book freeze, cowboy. You couldn't fucking hear me! Ah! I was screaming at you! What the fuck? 
I was on the phone. <laughs> the first season especially leans harder into being a comedy than an action show. That's where you get a lot of the jokes and the emphasis is on Barry's troubles, trying to learn how to be an actor. There are a lot of cringe comedy moments where Barry makes a complete idiot of himself and he comes across almost like a socially retarded golem. He really doesn't know how to act because he has trouble even being human. And this leads to some downright absurd moments. Of course, that's not to say the criminal stuff is completely serious. In fact, they can be just as stupid and ridiculous. But when it comes time to be serious, Barry gets serious. While he might start off as a pretty shitty actor, the dude is an exceptional assassin, capable of killing entire buildings worth of guys and not feeling a thing about it. Hell, it gets to the point where some of the most terrifying moments of the show, the intense parts, are when you think Barry's about to kill somebody. And it's not afraid to paint him as a downright evil human being at times. In fact, Barry himself constantly fights on whether or not he's really evil. It's the major theme of season two, even getting into arguments with other characters over the assertion that because he followed orders, he himself is responsible for the deaths of his victims. I mean, she just ordered the murder, but he actually carried that shit out. Right, but it was her idea though, you know, like, so she, she, she made him do it. So what, so he's off the hook? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's gonna be messed up for life. Are we really debating the morality of murder? I mean, that's what the play is about. Macbeth is a murderer. Yeah, well then I guess so am I, right? I mean, I've killed people. Wait, I, I should just go blow my brains out because there's no hope for me, right? My soul's fucked because I was ordered to kill someone and I did it. You know, it doesn't make me a psycho. No, Barry, you're overreacting. We didn't say you were a psycho. You all just said that! Am I wrong? Isn't that what you guys are saying? I'm a fucking psycho? That's exactly what you fucking said. It's really easy for you guys to sit here and weigh in on some shit that you don't know about, but it's, um, it's fucking lame and, and, and it's not true. It's pure denial on his part. I mean... You pulled the trigger, homie. But it's a really cool inner conflict that he deals with throughout the show. And as it goes on, you see Barry discover new parts of himself and question more of his own identity. But things are not simple for him in the slightest. And the powder keg of trying to evade various mafias, cartels, law enforcement, and trying to be a fucking actor in the middle of all this just gets too much to handle. Plus, by the end, you kind of want him to get punished. He does a lot of fucked up shit in this show, some justifiable and others just out of pure malice. It gets to the point where he's downright terrified to open up to others because he doesn't want them to think he's evil. And you see that, yeah, his stories aren't exactly barbecue material. Hell, even before he became a hitman, he did some pretty grim shit. This actually leads into a point I really like about Barry. The show understands people pretty well, from the pettiness, to the good, to the downright grotesque. It's a good look at how people who have lived different lives might assume others have it. Sally is extremely entitled because she views herself as a victim who is owed glory. And when you you see her backstory, it does make sense why she would develop a complex like this. It's not a positive thing, but you understand how it happened. Same with Barry. He's completely numb to death and killing, so when he's forced to actually dig deep into his own humanity, he's thrown into a tailspin. That part of himself he tried to bury just to do his job properly now has to come back, and it does cause problems for him on both fronts, especially come season 3. But what I love most about this show is how you see the divide between the cushy acting world and the real world full of crime. The actor characters are completely sheltered, borderline clueless idiots that just want to be in a movie. They're not bad people. In fact, a lot of them are pretty chill and likable. Barry's roommates were both pretty funny. I liked their dynamic and just how blind they were to the shit Barry was bringing to their doorstep. But when the crime aspect comes to the show, it comes hard. You just see how vicious the people are compared to Gene and his class. If Barry flubs a line in rehearsal, he'll get his ear nagged off. If Barry fucks up a job, the chest will send dudes to kill him. And major emphasis is placed on how if you're adjusted to one lifestyle or the other, then doing anything else just seems completely alien and incomprehensible. Fuchs in season one seems like he's gonna have a stroke trying to explain to Barry why being an actor and a hitman is a pretty bad idea. You know how you and I talk all the time about my purpose? You think acting could be your purpose? I don't know. I just, I, I, don't, I just feel really motivated right now or something. Like, but, it made me feel really good. Okay, but what about what we do together, Barry? These are professional actors, and they're the real deal, and they say I got something. No, I get, I get it, I get it, but I think you gotta think this thing through. I mean, you wanna, you wanna go out there and try to burn a guy and have him say, hey, there's the guy from the chicken commercial. I don't know if I do commercials. 
This is sort of a spoiler, but one of my favorite scenes of the show is in Season 2. For context, the acting class is given a project to perform a sketch detailing a significant part of their life. The other students do stuff like when they left their spouse, or the first time they saw a horse in real life, basic shit like that. But Barry is struggling to come up with an idea. Everyone in the class knows Barry is ex-military. Around this time, Barry and Gene have had some friction, so to sort of get under his skin, Gene suggests the first time Barry ever had to kill somebody. He's uncomfortable with the suggestion, but decides to do it because his other war story is, uh, a bit too personal. I'll leave it at that. Gene has some of the other students try to perform this skit while Barry compares it to what actually happened. They do the basic Hollywood thing where the guy playing Barry hesitates to shoot, arguing with his buddy who's standing watch with him before finally pulling the trigger, then breaking down crying at the idea of killing another human being while his partner consoles him. That's the fantasy version of what went down. In truth, Barry was standing guard with his buddy Albert cracking jokes. They spotted two guys close to the base they didn't recognize, and... And, uh, I asked if... We should radio Lieutenant Hubble. Uh, should we maybe radio Lieutenant Hubble, sir? Fuck no, you don't gotta radio him, man. Take the shot, dude. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. He says that's a green light to shoot the guy. Look, you're gonna miss anyway, man. Just scare the fuck up. Oh, oh, my shoulder. I forgot how these things kick back. Jesus, Bergman, you got him! <laughs> fuck are you shooting at? Bergman just took out a sheep fucker from 700 yards! Fuck off. Yeah! Hey, there's more. What? Uh, look. Yeah, there's two on a rise. Looks like they're checking out their buddy. No way. No, 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 no. No way. Yep. Barry just popped him. Didn't think about it. Then joked and celebrated with the rest of his buddies. Because why wouldn't they? It's stuff like this that makes me love this show so much. Seeing these clashes on how people view the world and how it works versus what would actually happen. It's genuinely clever subversion of expectation. It doesn't go for shock value. These things actually matter because A, it's pretty accurate to how things like this work in real life. And B, they build up to bigger and bigger moments and character reveals. I mean, you can obviously see why Barry would hesitate to clarify what actually happened considering these are just a bunch of stupid actors that never actually had to shoot anybody before, so they don't understand what it's like to be in his shoes. He's afraid of being judged, so he keeps it close to his chest. Very, very good stuff. Very, very good. Now, I feel like I should bring up another point. Does this show ever get political? There are some winks and nods, but I personally feel like it's kept firmly in the good fun space. Sometimes even kind of poking fun at how weird stuff like toxic masculinity sounds to people that don't already believe in shit like that. Or we could try not speaking to each other for a couple days or like even say a month or two and reset that way. Okay. I just feel like you've got some toxic masculinity issues you need to work out and until then we just shouldn't interact so much or like at all, you know? You and Wacko do the hit. We do? Yeah. And then afterwards you take him out. Take him out? Mm-hmm. He's a Marine. <laughs> I don't fucking care who he is. He knows too much, he has to go. So what, we just take out whoever threatens us? That's toxic masculinity. The fuck is that? But other than that, I'll say that Barry is firmly a good show made to entertain an audience. Plus, it takes place in Los Angeles in modern day. You really think you can avoid shit like woke crap in there? I mean, come on guys. I feel like getting worked up over the small bits kind of ruins what is really a hidden gem. This isn't even talking about the cinematography and the actual production behind the show. It looks great. Able to go from a bright and sunny vibe to a darker, borderline noir style. Hell, some moments can almost feel like a David Fincher deal. Now yes, there are occasions where you can obviously tell they're not actually firing guns and just sort of put, you know, those CGI flashes on the, on the barrels. It always looks goofy, but it is what it is. For the most part, everything is just slow, clinical, and precise. And some episodes can outright take your breath away in how it's all filmed and edited. Season 1 especially has an episode that will have you on the edge of your seat because you just have no idea what the hell is about to happen. The action is all great too, with each season escalating what they can get away with. Season 1's big moment was a shootout in a 
and Stash House, but by Season 3, there's full-blown highway chases with motorcycle gangs, and who knows what they've got in mind for Season 4 when that happens. Let's just say there's a lot of threads that the third season brought up that can go places, including a new antagonist, who is fucking terrifying. But this is about all I can really say about Barry. I don't want to give away most of the reveals or twists because the show is just that good. I want you guys to go in and see what's under the hood here. I already feel like I gave away too much with the acting project scene. I mean, that's one of the best scenes of the show, period. It's really damn good. Still, I highly recommend you guys sit down and watch Barry. As stated, it's three seasons, each one being only eight half-hour long episodes. So it's not as much of a commitment as other shows out there. If you like really goofy out there comedies, you'll like it. If you like grim, depressing, and violent dramas, then you'll like it. You can find the show on HBO Max or, uh, less than reputable sources, but I really want you guys to give this show a watch. It's pretty damn great, and I hope you guys love it too. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. We hold on to Fuchs until it's done. So get to it. Let me just tell you something. If you, if you, if you hurt him oh. anymore, if you, if you if you kill him, anything. I'll come back here and I'll kill every single one of you. You understand me? He cares about Fuchs. That's just nice. You don't feel what we feel, and it's evident that you should. Hey loser, do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're gonna be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's gonna look at you funny. There's gonna be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're gonna plant crack in your house, and they're gonna arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.